Hi all, I have another amazing game of Leela to show you today. So this is Leela against Fritz. And this is in the Chesscon Blitz Battle 2018. The time control, five minutes per two second increment. Let's have a look. D4 from Leela. We have E6 inviting the French defense. And Leela obliges. We have D5, Knight C3, Knight F6. The classical variation, Bishop G5, Bishop E7. E5, so a central advanced pawn wedge. Knight F D seven and now Leela chooses the Alakine Chatard Gambit. This is a really dangerous weapon of choice, and I have quite a few games myself in this line, even in over the board. You might want to check the channel. I'll give a link in the pinned comment for those games. So actually Fritz accepted the Gambit, took on G five. After H G Queen takes G five, we have Knight H three. Queen E seven and here we have the move queen g4 hitting g7 it seems in this position this is a funny bit of trivia actually when i was researching this game that after king king f8 which was played uh if we look instead for those interested in this line g6 it seems most strong over the board players are choosing knight f4 and I think the likes of Stockfish 9 uh, in analysis actually changes uh, assessments here. And although Knight h3 does seem to have had the idea of Knight f4, it seems in this particular configuration that actually uh, Knight g5 is a really strong alternative. For example, h5. Queen g3, knight c6, white castles protecting d4. And now there's a really nifty maneuver. Say black does this, which seems natural to castle queenside. Rook h4, and then rook f4. So the knight, the knight going to g5, hitting f7, seems actually much more critical than what seems to be being played in over the board. This line seems to be very, very dangerous for black. If black's committed to castling on the king side, then yeah, this can get really nasty, for example, like this. Things can get extremely nasty, like crashing through to f7 eventually. So yeah, that's an interesting bit of trivia, I thought, that actually that's a really interesting way of playing it. So most over the ball games, they have knight f4 here. And this line, it seems as though once black is set for castling queenside, um, if we ignore bishop g6, that's pretty unsound. But say queen e3, once black castles queenside, Black's not going to be that much worse. Technically, Black's got a slight edge. So that's a very, very interesting uh, idea if you want to follow this this knight h3 in this line after g6 to play actually knight g5. It's counterintuitive, but it looks pretty dangerous from my analysis. So anyway, let's get back to the game. King f8 was played. Knight g5 here by Leela is very logical hitting h7. h6, that pawn's pinned, of course. So, and it, yeah, so it can actually be left here, but uh, so f4 was played, a6, and now white has the luxury of casting queenside. Now, Leela statistically wins games like this where the, the rooks are not going to be connected for a while, the king's being misplaced, there's a kind of rook over here. This, this kind of uh, position in general, really, uh, Leela does well here. In this style of position, c5, we have bishop d3, king g8 was played. There's actually an immediate tactical threat in this position. If black played b5, for example, then bang, knight takes f7. Uh, if king takes f7, then f5 is actually quite crushing. What's happening here is that the f files are really dangerous. This is far too dangerous, uh, for example, like that. And Otherwise, if king e8, uh, let's let's say king e8, then just taking here, this is going to be a massive position for white. White's got a big advantage. So this uh, is a really dangerous position. King g8, trying to parry uh, threats like knight takes f7. Now here, rook h5 was played. It seems, yeah, knight takes f7 doesn't really do too much in this particular configuration. For example, here uh, it looks as though black might actually have enough resources to handle the situation. It could end in, in a draw like this, a 
dynamically balanced position. Uh, so anyway, rook h5 makes actually f5 even more effective now um, without the need of a sacrifice just yet. Knight c6 was played here. On h takes g, you might be wondering, just taking on h8, this is crushing its checkmate actually. So knight c6, f5 now. So this is a really dangerous build up of forces by Leela. And it seems actually the relative should we say alignment or concentration of, of force, especially the rooks, is in White's favour. These rooks are simply disconnected. They're, not, they're having a hard time of saying hello, hello to each other. But these rooks are having a great time here. And also the other pieces are helping coordinate, again, soft spots. So, yeah, the relative ability for Leela to build up pressure is huge here. C takes D4. Uh, if knight takes d4, then f6, this position is very, very promising. I'll have to say check here, very sharp lines, but white ends up hugely better. You can see the concentration of force against the black king. I'm trying to hold on to h6 here, but it's dropping. Look at this huge alignment potential being demonstrated against the poor h6 pawn in this line. These pieces are just spectator pieces. So this is just crashing through, for example. Uh, so C takes D4 was chosen. F6 now. This is looking very nasty. Queen F8. Now White's playing this position. Guess what Leela plays if I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay. Knight takes F7. Yeah, not worrying about the C3 knight. So yes, what's going on here? Black played knight takes f6. Let's look at a few alternatives. Uh, for example, queen takes f7, bishop g6, queen takes is just mating. So actually that can't be taken. And the same thing with the king really, if the king dared step out and check, and then same thing. So this is just a really dangerous position. <laughs> and let's just move on because it's quite complicated with knight takes f6, the game continuation. e takes, queen takes f7. And now, yeah, the knight's still left there to be taken. And it is actually taken here. Bishop g6, queen c8. And now a bit of toying from Leela in this position. You might think, by the way, the check. Let's have a quick look at the check. This is just very nasty. This position, for example, check here. And we see powerful alignment against f6 like this. Uh, so against h6 rather. So this is absolutely crushing these kind of variations. There's no real point it seems taking on b2. So we have queen c7. And it looks as though yeah, there's a bit of playfulness with bishop d3. Because queen f7 was played here. Which prevents like Queen G6 from white at the very least. That is like a key threat. So, but Leela now improves on things with Bishop E8 saying, I'm still going to have my Queen G6, but without allowing Queen F7. We have Knight D8 and now Queen G6. So what is going on here? Well, the Queen is keeping this pawn pinned and actually this F file is extremely dangerous for the alignment principle. If both rooks can get behind the F file, then essentially White's tactical plan runs like this with F takes G, Queen takes, and then we just play Rook F8 checkmate. That's the basic plan here. And it's actually very, very difficult for Black with this congestion, with these spectator pieces, to do anything about this. We see B5. If C takes B2, it's harmless. Look at White's King, it's very cozy at home. And then we have this alignment being built up with this huge threat of F takes G7. So for example, like this, and then it's it's all over. Black would have to give up the Queen. <laughs> because if if Queen takes G7, yeah, Rook F8, checkmate. That's the basic idea, and it's kind of unstoppable, believe it or not. So B5, and it's happening in the game continuation. Uh, White has to be careful not to block things up with f7 after king f8 black's the one that's better so rook h3 uh, is played 
rook a7 rook takes c3 actually now which is strong in this position uh, it, it is possible just to play this as well maybe black's best would be this and it's still absolutely crushing for white these variations so anyway rook takes c3 queen e5 uh, just leaving the c8 bishop to go so white is actually winning material now check that's taken f7 check and black cannot take with the knight because bishop takes f7 is check here as a double check so and actually that's mate there so uh, we have king f8 rook takes d8 king e7 rook b8 uh, Lila is just a bishop up now so let's see the technique yeah black's just shedding pawns now as well uh, so it's quite straightforward in a way to just win the bishop up <laughs> as you might expect yeah and uh, this is just desperate stuff from black black can't really do anything here so these pawns are look absolutely winning yeah Lila's absolutely winning I don't think there's even much trolling to be done here it's checkmate okay so a beautifully played Alakine Chatard attack yeah and it seems this kind of possession of a misplaced king is totally ripe climate for putting huge pressure mounting up the heavy pieces in alignment against the F file making use of pins and just coordinating generally where black cannot really balance that attacking pressure at all the attacking pressure is mounting up and it cannot be balanced if it was a mathematical equation it's you know it's not able to be balanced so i hope you enjoyed this attacking masterpiece as much as me and shows what a dangerous weapon this gambit is and you might want to check out the knight g5 concept as demonstrated as opposed to knight f4 in the variations there so um Okay, if you enjoyed this game video and analysis, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessbowl.net. And that has my reference code, which lets me invite you to a free tournament. You can play against other YouTubers. And you can also check out analysis from the improved menu, learn from the masters. So sometimes there's analysis updates here on these games. So you'll be able to check those out as well. Okay, comments, questions, likes, shares, subscribes, all appreciated. Thanks very much.